All right, uh, I'm Sean from the Azure Compute team. We're gonna talk about uh, open source at Microsoft. Um, so we're here in Santa Clara, across the street is uh, Levi's Stadium. Uh, some of you may know they hosted the Super Bowl there a couple of years ago. Um, one of the great things about the Super Bowl is all of the ridiculous things that you can bet on. So you can bet on how long it's gonna take to sing the national anthem. You can bet on whether or not somebody will fall off the stage as part of the halftime show. And last year you could even bet on whether one of the Microsoft Surface tablets that they use on the sideline would break down during the game. Uh, six to one odds, thankfully for us, uh, didn't pay out. But 10 years ago, you would not have even been able to get odds from Vegas on this happening, or this happening, or this happening. I've been at Microsoft for 12 years now and the transformation that we have made as a company has been nothing short of phenomenal. Uh, and it's now the best time ever to be at Microsoft because of the way that we're embracing openness and, in, and using open source tools. So in the next couple of minutes, I wanna quickly breeze through um, kind of how we think about OSS at Microsoft and what we're doing. So the most relevant thing for, for folks here at this particular event is um, our support for OSS tools and frameworks um, in Azure, so obviously we have great support for Cloud Foundry that we've been talking about, but we also have a hosted uh, Hadoop service, HD Insight, a number of the top container orchestrators available um, as, as fully open source versions running on Azure and a number of other tools. So if there's an open source tool uh, that you're interested in running on Azure that we don't have there yet, please let us know because we want to make that happen. But you might be saying, okay, well, clearly the reason that you're running all of those open source tools is because it's driving Azure consumption. So, okay, let's turn it around and look at how we do our own product development and, and ship uh, products for Microsoft. Anybody familiar with TypeScript? Anybody use TypeScript? So TypeScript is um, a, an extension to a superset of JavaScript that transpiles down to standard JavaScript. Um, it's a project that uh, Microsoft's been building in the open for about four or five years now, uh, founded by Anders Helsberg, who is also the founder of Turbo Pascal and C Sharp. Um, it is now at something like uh, 20,000 commits, about 10,000 uh, resolved issues, and I believe there's about 200 contributors, um, active contributors on the project. So pretty, um, pretty active open source project. Um, Visual Studio Code, our uh, lightweight text editor, very similar metrics, um, thousands and thousands of, of commits, hundreds of contributors, lots of activity, lots of interest, really um, great engagement from, from the community. And last but not least, of course, .NET Core, one of the jewels of our uh, developer suite that we open sourced a couple of years ago, and one where we're seeing really great traction in terms of getting external contributors involved um, to the point where, you know, about half of the commits that we're, uh, that we're seeing are coming from externals. Um, you know, some, some of the top contributors are, um, are coming from external and we're getting additional features um, from those external contributors. But let's see if we can dig a little deeper. Let's see if there's a team or product at Microsoft that there's no obvious business justification for them adopting open source um, or adopting open source tools, but that they're really just using it because for the same reasons that a number of you use it, which is because it's the best tool for the job. So let me introduce you to a product known as Microsoft Windows, um, the Microsoft Windows operating environment. Uh, as you can tell from this box, Microsoft Windows is an incredibly old product. Um, with a, a long history uh, in, in source control um, and, and thousands of people that work on it, many of whom uh, have been working on it for, in some cases, decades. Um, I think there are probably half a dozen JavaScript frameworks that have been founded in the last week that are built by people that are younger than Windows. Um, and so when Windows decided a couple of years ago that they were gonna move um, all of the, the uh, source control into Git, it was not initially uh, greeted you know, in, in, in the best way. There was a lot of res um, resistance. People were worried about it impacting productivity, um, adding risk, they had to learn a whole new tool, a whole new way of, of going about their business. Um, and so uh, the engineering systems team who was actually driving um, the, the transition of uh, the Windows team into Git actually put up these posters um, around buildings in Redmond 
that sort of walked people through the stages that they were going to go through as they were adopting Git. And I actually saw dozens and dozens of people that literally went through um, all of these stages, all the way up to the final one where they said, huh, this is actually pretty cool. Like I can switch branches and like, you know, instantaneously and, and um, get, you know, great offline support. Like, okay, okay, now, now I'm starting to buy in. The project to migrate Windows to Git uh, ended about a month ago, um, and I think it's safe to say that it's been successful. As Windows is now the largest Git, Git repo on the planet. Um, every day there are roughly um, 4,000 developers making check-ins across more than 400 branches um, in on, on potentially three and a half million files. Um, and it's, you know, the, the team is still, still rocking. All of that Git knowledge has uh, led to a, another pretty cool stat, uh, which is that Microsoft now has more contributors on GitHub than any other company. Uh, there's roughly 15,000 employees at Microsoft who have their GitHub identity uh, mapped to uh, their Microsoft ID. And so really deep uh, engagement there. So let me wrap up by bringing this back to what we're talking about this week in, in Cloud Foundry. We've seen in a number of the keynote sessions customers talking about their Cloud Foundry journey and um, the way in which it has been about more than technology um, in, in the way that they modernize. What they've learned is that modernizing the way that they do business is at least as much about culture and people and collaboration as it is about technology. And so, Microsoft, and, and what I'm really excited about us joining the foundation is that we've gone through that process ourselves. We've seen the way that you can, you can change and how you use technology, um, as well as how you can uh, change your culture. Um, the last thing I'll say is, while it may seem surprising to people uh, that we have so thoroughly embraced open source, um, if you were paying attention, um, you may have seen early signs that we're really an open source developer company at heart. I mean. Based on stereotypes, doesn't this look like a bunch of open source developers? Heck of a lot of hair and some incredible beards on that photo. Thank you very much. <laughs>